So just how bad are these supply chain constraints? Well, as some major brands have been forced to ramp down production, market researcher TrueCar says U.S. dealers only had 17 days worth of new car inventory on their lots. Compare that to the same month between 2015 and 2019, when dealerships averaged 64 days worth of inventory. So just how long can these issues last and how is the industry dealing with it? Well, to discuss, let's bring in some other auto news. Let's bring in the car coach, Lauren Fix. Lauren, always a pleasure to have you on the show to talk about these issues. Now, analysts at LMC Automotive believe it could take all of 2022 to get a hold of this chip shortage and have things return to some sort of normalcy. As we've seen sales and inventory struggling, how is the auto industry going to be able to deal with this? Well, the auto industry is trying to go what's called vertical. They're going to try and build things within their own companies. If they need chips, they're going to they're going to use their old chip factories to try and produce something so they can get product out the door. Cuz you're talking about such a huge hit in sales. That affects profits, that affects the unions, that affects jobs all the way up and down the pike, and that also affects local communities. If a dealer's not selling as many vehicles, they're not going to be as using as many services in the local area, and of course that means employees. So there's a lot of people that are impacted by this global chip shortage, although it seems like it's right on the surface, there's a lot more to it. There's also a shortage in steel, there's a shortage in wiring harnesses, and there's a shortage in rubber, and a lot of that is still sitting on ships that are waiting months, literally, out in Long Beach, Long Boat, or, or Long Beach, and other areas waiting to dock. And once they dock, they still need workers to unload those ships, and then drivers to take them to their destination. So there's a lot of things in the logistics side of this that are also causing part of this chip shortage. Wow, and it's certainly, I know we've talked about shortage after shortage here, but at the same time, U.S. dealers have been able to weather the storm, making significant profit as prices for vehicles were up due to those supply constraints. So are we going to continue to see that trend moving forward, or will all of this eventually come to a head? What say you? Well, the dealers are franchises, so we know that right away. So when they're a franchise, they can put whatever price they want on the window sticker for you to buy it. And sometimes you'll go to a dealer and say, oh, they've got the vehicle I want. That's great. And you look at the window sticker and it has something set that's called ADM. That's additional dealer markup. Translated as pure profit for the dealer. And they have every right to charge that, and you have every right to pay it or not to pay it. So keep in mind, if they can't get vehicles, it's supply and demand, economics 101, right? If you don't have enough supply, but you have a huge demand, we can charge a higher price for that. And that's not always going to be the case, but in the near future, and possibly up to in the next year, like they are saying from LMC, it's entirely possible that you're going to see additional dealer markup on a lot of vehicles. Right now, if you want a vehicle, your best bet's to order one. Don't take anything off the lot because you will be paying a premium price. There's very few incentives, and that means more profits in the dealer's pockets. And, and Lauren, I was going to ask about this this markup that you just mentioned. How common was that, say, before we had the supply constraints? Did you did dealers regularly do that? Because we know we see a lot of deals come through where they're they're actually knocking money off the price. Right. Now, your ADM or additional dealer markup is things on, like, the 2021 Porsche 911. You want a GT3? You're going to pay for it. And I, I actually called a dealer on one. It was $40,000 over sticker. But you're finding as much as $10,000 over on something as simple as a Kia Seltos, which is something that is a pretty mainstream car. But it's about supply and demand. So you're seeing it was always common on limited production vehicles that there was a high demand for, uh, such as the TRX for the truck or a Shelby Mustang or a Corvette. But now you're talking about this ADM being added to just average cars. And I don't think this is going away in the near future. Now, I want to bring another aspect into all of this, which is that earlier this week we discussed a fuel shortage in the UK as the nation faces a truck driver shortage to get the product to the pump. And as that happened, online searches for electric cars in the UK surged 1,500 percent, according to Google search data. So as we look at oil prices going up, do you generally see more EVs being sold in the future? Well, the problem is still the same with electric vehicles. There's even more chips used in electric vehicles. But what it's showing is interest in electric vehicles. So people are researching and deciding, does this work for my family, for my lifestyle? Remember that the insurance rates here in the U.S. are twice as much as they are for a vehicle that is a non-electric vehicle. So it may or may not work for you. So you have to do your research on the cost of ownership, because there is a cost for electricity. And that's also getting more expensive, because of the shortage of electricity. And that leads us into other conversations of countries like Poland producing nuclear power because there's a shortage of power as well as a shortage of 
gasoline and diesel. And so people are, that are considering electric vehicles are now starting to think, you know, this might work for me. Or maybe I'm just going to work from home, which we're also seeing a higher increase of also. Well, and that's interesting because I think we saw that at the beginning of the pandemic, too, of the work from home. People were kind of like that we didn't need cars. But then there were also people who were like in major cities who said, now I maybe do need a car, which caused people to, to buy. It's, it's been kind of a vicious cycle for pretty much everything since the start of the pandemic. Lauren Fix, the car coach, thank you so much for your insight today.